Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Color roll, please. Keith Bratcher. Here. Joe Crow. Here. Linda Dansby. Present. Joe Machado. Here. Jerry Chartain. Here. Tony Webb. Zane Cantrell. Present. Mr. Chairman, in the absence of Mr. Webb, uh, Joe Crowell will be back. Okay, Joe, you're up tonight. We have the minutes before us. You have taken a look at it. It's been mailed out to us. Do we have any changes or additions to the minutes? Move for approval. Have a motion that be approved. Do we have a second? All those in favor, say aye. aye. Those opposed, like sign. They are approved. Let me welcome each of you here to the Board of Zoning Appeals. The, uh, as we get into the items, we'll ask our staff to make a presentation, give us a report on each item. After that, those of you that will be making, uh, who have made a request, will ask you to come to the podium because there may be some questions and you may want to uh, give us some additional information. Following that, we'll have a public hearing on each item. And uh, after the public hearing, we will have a, a decision on each request. The first item we have is the uh, request by the Word and Spirit Church. And this is located at Tshebaville Highway, and it's a uh, illumination of a sign, internal illumination. Application 2009-59, followed by Word and Spirit Church, is um, affecting the address located at 4137 Shelbyville Highway. It's a two and a half acre site, zone residential 15. It's operating a church at this site. They are seeking variance relief to allow an internally illuminated sign within the R15 zone. The sign will meet our sign standards for size. It's 50 square feet in area, and because of it being located along a four-lane divided highway. They can have a sign up to that size. It will be placed on a black base and um, they are hoping to illuminate the, uh, the sign so uh, church members will be able to identify it easily since the church itself is located uh, off towards the rear of the property. Uh, there are no practical difficulties or conditions that uh, they show that justify a variance. However, um, the board has considered these types of requests before. Uh, this is the site itself. Uh, this is prior to the construction of the church that there is there now. And this is the sign that they have located um, towards the driveway. It's temporary advertising the location. And shots along Shelbyville. Highway, there is a church located uh, to the south of the property, southwest, that has a, an internally illuminated sign. And, and And that's the sign itself that they are seeking approval for. And this is the site plan that shows the location of the sign, and it will be placed back 15 feet off of the right of way in accordance with our regulations. And that concludes that presentation. Do we have anyone here representing the church? If you'll come around, please. You'll give us your name and any additional information you'd like to share with the board. Uh, it's Bill Adcock, and uh, we, uh, the primary reason we need the sign is that the road is so dark out there that it's very difficult to see the driveway coming in, and we've had complaints uh, from church members already that say they're having trouble finding the driveway at night. So that's the primary reason. Okay. 
we have any questions from the board. Thank you. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. Do we have a motion on it? I'll make a motion to be approved. I have a motion to be approved. I have a second. I've got a second. Jerry. Call the roll, please. Keith Bratcher. Yes. Joe Crowell. Yes. Linda Dansby. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. The motion does carry, sir. Okay, it is approved. The next item we have is a request by Highways Incorporated, who is request, they are requesting a temporary extension, temporary extraction of resources. Application 2009-60, filed by Highways Incorporated, involves a property located at 7242 Renro Road. They are, this is a larger parcel, but they are only affecting three acres of this parcel. It's zone residential 15. They are extracting rock from the site to supply the construction of the southwest loop for the city of Murfreesboro. They state that uh, the rock material will be transferred by dump truck, that they'll run approximately eight trucks per day for the duration of the job. Uh, staff um, has indicated in the staff report that uh, the if approved, that they would have to supply the engineering department with a road bond and a surety bond. And um, we have recommended conditions toward in our staff report for the board to consider. And I'm just going to show you some photos of the site and its location. Uh, it involves the south portion of the parcel. Uh, the parcel itself is large and it's split by Windrow Road. And that's just showing the area of the extraction in relation to Winrow Road and it, with the property boundaries and the overall aerial. We posted the sign at the site and that concludes our presentation. Oh, we have received phone calls on this application um, with, with concerns and uh, we distributed an email that was submitted by a property owner. Okay, do we have anyone here representing this request from the Highway Corporate? My name is Daniel Odom, represent Highways Incorporated. We're out of Cookville, Tennessee. We're the contractor for the Southwest Loop Road Project for the city of Murfreesboro. And we are requesting this permit to use as our bar pit to, re to get the rock off the property to build the road for the city of Murfreesboro. Do we have any questions? Keith? Uh, yes, sir. I Got several, uh, well, a few. Um, I know as far as the blasting you all do out there, um, I know that's regulated by the state. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, you have a, you all do have a permit, a blasting permit that's been issued to you by the state? Yes, sir. With okay. our, our subcontractor doing our blasting is Austin Powder. They're state okay. certified and licensed. And then they do a pre-blast survey, and we have a seismic monitoring out okay. there going on at every shot. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, so that's, that's, that's one of my questions. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, where y'all be traveling uh, on that road, on that county road, have y'all been required or have y'all put up a road bond? We have not yet. We okay. are uh, on, we have not put up any sort of, sort of bond so far. Okay. Uh, our project includes asphalt paving to be on the roadway. We know there will be some uh, cracks and probably some deficiencies made in the roadway. Yes, and we feel we, we're, we're willing to take care of anything that we uh, disturb or uh, break in the process of the construction. Uh, we've got, we think right now, uh, depending on weather and everything, how it goes, uh, we've probably got the pr overall project is to be completed by fall of 2010, but the hauling will be completed probably by uh, March or April of this spring of 2010. All right. 
Now let me ask you, uh, when you all are doing the hauling and stuff off the property, do you all have um, some type of equipment that you all sweep or we keep the roadway on, clean during the day after? We have a broom on the project, uh, and if there's any any complaints or any dirt that tracks out, we feel we'll t we keep it there 24 hours a day. We've got uh, two workers that are staying on the job, so they can be there any time to any problems. And yes, we keep it clean, and we've got the truck and roads uh, signs and construction signs warning the public what's going on. Okay. Uh, one other question I got. Um, have you all, uh, I know you all are just extracting from the property, but yes, have, you all, have you had any conversation with the West about uh, when the prop, when the project's done? Yes, sir. You know, you're going to have where you've removed this rock. Do you know if they, if they have any plans or? Uh, Our plans right now for the, the area where we're extracting the property to make that a pond. Make it a pond. Yes, sir. It'd just okay. be for agricultural uses. Okay. Well, let me ask you this: Do you do you have a um, an idea of what size you know hog this is going to be after that? We're right, right now. We're uh, to get the material that we need for the project. We're disturbing uh, right around three acres, and that's what we'll we'll have a be creating him about a two to three acre pond. Okay. And to finish up on that, lastly, will there be any type of, uh, you know, if they, you know, in y'all's conversation, you had anything about like any type of buffering or anything that's going to, other than what's already there? To no, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh. Joe, how many trucks a day? How many, let's put it this way, how many loads a day will you move? Uh, on a good day, uh, we are running right now from 6 30 a.m. till. 4 p.m. and we're trying to get uh, 75 to 85 loads. About 85 loads a day. Yes, sir. Will there be a fence put around this pond after it's all over? Uh, not by us. That mean that be up to, There's a fence right now that runs parallel with windrow to keep you know for. A, you say the lot size here is three acres, and you're going to extract three acres. Am I right? The lots, the property that Mr. West owns. I don't know, there's probably 100, 200 oh, acres okay. back there. We're only working on a small portion of okay, it. Okay, it says lot size, three acres. Oh, that's I, on, that's the area we're disturbing. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Uh, Linda? I wanted to ask you, what's the route you take to get to your project? Can you show us on the map? Uh, the, from our project, when you turn out of the west property on Windrow, you, bear, you turn right, coming back towards uh, New Salem and 99. And our construction, our project's right there at the uh, intersection of Old Salem and Highway 99 comes in right off 99. And it's a 7,000 feet roadway See, project, uh, phase 3A and 3B of Southwest Loop. You pretty much stay on Windrow Road the whole time? Yes, ma'am, that's the only road we're on. The only road you're on. Um, and have you submitted a reclamation plan to the county engineering department? We, our property now contains a TDEC, Tennessee Department of Environmental Conservation state permit with the plans and the elevations and everything like that that we're going to and we've included that in our in our application. And does do you have a copy of that Danielle? Um, I have some printouts that look like a, a plan but we will require that if it's approved to be submitted to the engineer for you to discuss okay. that with our engineer and and just a, a drawing of yes yeah okay we've got one I can get you. okay Jerry, would, would you have any problem? Uh, she's asked for a copy of the blasting permit. Yes, that's no problem. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak. If you'll come, come forward this time. Richard Crabtree. I live at 5171 Windrow Road. I live about a mile from the site where this, these trucks are ending up at. Um, in early November, without warning, these trucks started zooming by my house. We had no idea what was going on. They start early in the morning at daylight. They even run on Saturday mornings. 
We didn't know what, what was going on. Nobody in that subdivision knew what was going on. The zoning sign was down there at the site, but most people in my subdivision, I live in, live in New Salem, had no idea what was going on. Windrow Road's a very narrow country road. There's no shoulder. These trucks coming up and down through there when buses are running in the morning, and I, and I know they're not going to speed limit either. We counted one morning in 30 minutes time, almost 40 passes in 30 minutes. That's unbelievable. I just don't see how them trucks were getting back and forth. Of course, this is only a three mile stretch of road, y'all. They can travel that road in five minutes. Can you imagine having to hear that racket every morning at 6.30? Boom, 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 just constantly. I had no problem with them getting the, the rock from down yonder, but they got to realize people live on that road. And my road, I mean, my house, I have to cut the grass out there by that road. One day I was out there cutting grass, I thought I was going to get run over. It scared me to death they was going up and down there so fast. So, I'd like to ask for some restrictions be put on this traveling they're going to be doing. Uh, time in the morning, like I said, my kids used to catch a bus right out there. I think it's dangerous. I really do. That's what I have to say about it. So you're not opposed to, the, to them uh, mining the rock there, but you, you would like to uh, be assured that it'd be a little safer than what you I feel it is I just don't think now. it's safe right now, the way they're doing I don't know if they were on some type of race or something to get as much hauled as they could. Because mm -hmm. like I said, from November, early November to Thanksgiving week or just prior, it was every day, even Saturdays. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand, you know, what their hurry was. <laughs> Are you saying they're speeding or they're just I think so. On the stretch of road I live on, it's a straightaway. It's about a mile and a half, just before you get to the site where they're dumping at. And, I, and coming back down through there, I think they really haul. Is, it, is there a posted speed limit on it's this road? It's 45. 45, okay. Uh, I just don't think they're going 45. And like I said, you've got to remember, school buses are running that road every morning from six o'clock to eight o'clock and it's just there's no shoulder on that road and if you've got eight dump trucks running back and forth on a three mile stretch of road just imagine because they're picking that stuff up and getting it and getting rid of it quickly so well we thank you very much for coming here do we have any questions i got a question I, sir i didn't understand you said one morning in 30 minutes you had uh, 40. About, about 40 passes of what our What do you mean by uh, that? What I'm saying is we counted 40 trucks going one way or the other. In 30 minutes? Yeah. So it'd be, you're talking about a round trip. You're talking yeah. about uh, 20 trucks made it a round trip. Well, I, in, it, it could have been eight trucks because like I'm saying, it's only going to take them five minutes to, to go from one site to the other site. So how far are they traveling? Three miles. miles. They're traveling three miles? Yeah. Thank you. Jerry? Did, uh, did you happen to uh, call the sheriff's department to ask them to come out there? No, my, my house is a brick house, so it's, and my uh, wife and I sleep in the front bedroom. So every morning, she would wake up and have to move when them trucks would wake her up. And on Saturday morning, too. I mean, that's just not right, them being allowed to do that that early, and then on Saturday on top of that. Uh, Mr. Crabtree, if we uh, if we somehow limited uh, uh, put a restriction on the days uh, and uh, uh, say through the week, and if we uh, limited uh, put a restriction on the hours on times they could and couldn't, uh, I mean that would relieve some of what concerns you have. Yeah. Okay. And I think also um, somebody needs to tell these drivers to slow down. Right. Well, I mean, there's no reason for anybody right. to get hurt on that road. Right. I understand that. When, you know, we, you, you being a resident there, I mean, if that's a concern, of yours, you may want to contact, the, you know, the sheriff's department about that. But I, when I was trying to, to try to address, you know, yeah. the concerns you have. But if, if we if we address those somehow, you, that would uh, somehow relieve some concerns you have. But, uh, all right. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else?
Commissioner. How y'all doing tonight? I'm Ron Williams, the county commissioner from out there. Uh, I've had several uh, people that have had concerns about the traffic flow, as this last gentleman uh, has alluded to, but nobody that was really a problem with the extraction part of the land itself. The, the West have a, a nice-sized farm there, and they will end up with a with a pond that they've needed for a long time over there that's kind of uh, costly to dig one, so they've gotten a, a pretty good deal on that. So they actually own both sides of the road uh, that's going on there. Uh, so I don't know if it's something that would work out good to limit the, the starting time from the folks, because that has been some concerns that people that have contacted me about that they are out uh, in full force at 6.30 to 6.30 and 7 in the morning with the school buses out, but uh, everything that comes up here is always, that is, uh, is a concern. Uh, I would like support getting this in because if we don't use the short three mile track, then they're going to have to get their field from someplace else and then it brings down in play more schools, more problems, and more roads because when you get an extraction thing that they're able to do this within the three mile radius, it makes it go faster, although it's an inconvenience for a short period of time or more so than, than spreading it out over longer months. So I would hope that we could uh, uh, pass this. A couple of things that I wanted to point out in the recommendations by the uh, the staff in, in this for uh, conditions that could be considered in this. Uh, they have in here that, and I don't know if you're going to do this, but i just like to point these out. It says that the owner of the property shall be responsible for ensuring that all settlement and drainage is controlled and maintained safe. That really should be the applicant or the highways incorporated should be that and not the property owner because they would really have a difficult time controlling what the uh, applicant was doing over there. And also in the item right below that, it says that the property owner shall be responsible for controlling the dust uh, and dirt, which really should fall on the applicant. So those two things, if you were to adopt those conditions, probably would, my suggestion would be to have the applicant highways incorporated be responsible for that as opposed to the property owner. And the only other thing that I would like to add on that is that that signs must be there letting everybody know that trucks are going up and down these highways. They've had a sign on Winrow Road there saying that the trucks are entering the highway, but the sign seems to have a tendency to fall over and get where you can't see it, I mean, as signs do, but I think it'd be very important to have on both ends of it signs posted that the trucks are traveling during these times so people traveling down through there at least will know that but I don't know if you want to restrict any starting late time or not but that's basically only the concerns that I've had on that thank you thank you commissioner is there a reason why you changed the um, well it's typical that the property owner and when a violation has occurred that the property owner is notified I do not know um, if I mean, I'm sure we could change it or include both, uh, but when uh, there's a violation on a piece of property, the property owners are notified, whether it's rented or it, it I really think both need to be notified, the, uh, the, the company working out there and the uh, owner of the property, so they would be, at least be aware of it. Mr. Chairman, may we ask our county engineer to come up and explain to us about the road bond and if that's been satisfied? If they choose to. We're open. Uh, my name's Dale Corbett, the county engineer here. The way the process works on these extraction procedures 
is once it's approved by the BGA to do an extraction, then we uh, calculate a road bond based on some numbers we've got from the highway department for them to put up a bond. The bond covers the distance that they are on county roads. In this case, it'll be the total distance. Um, the road, upon completion of the project, then the road is put into a condition that's approved by the highway commissioner. I re, uh, recertified this this afternoon by talking to Mike Williams on the phone. The road has to be brought up to his standard, or be county standard, but his approval before they release the bond at the completion of the project. Any questions? I understand there is a bridge on this route, and, and I don't know that firsthand, but is this also handled through the same? Who's it going to inspect the integrity of that bridge since we seem to be having those issues in Tennessee? There is a small bridge on there. Uh, it's an older bridge. Again, Mike uh, has indicated that he would do the inspection, probably through our office, because we do a lot of inspections and in working with his office to ensure that any damage is taken care of by the, by the company doing the work. Thank you. The company has indicated that they will be responsible for the, any of the damage on the road. That was in Keith's questioning, so uh, they, they would be liable for any of that. But I think the, the people who live out in there, the biggest concern that they have is the number of trucks and the speed. And I do think it's a good suggestion. If they think that it is, there's going to be a speed problem out there, they do need to contact the Sheriff's Department and they will come out and monitor that. So that's something that we, we don't, you know, law enforcement would have to monitor that aspect of it. Anything else of our county engineer? Thank you. Anyone else? We're open. Close the public hearing. We have a motion. Yeah, yes. We'll close the public hearing now. We're Could we available. Could we ask the applicant to come back? Pardon? Could we ask the applicant to come back for questions? Sure. Appreciate you taking the time. Um, is it, would an 8 a.m. start really hamper your project uh, after the school bus is gone? And listening to the concerns and everything, we accept that greatly. We're uh, working in that area. Our, of course, like he said, we've been working uh, Monday through Saturdays mm -hmm. for that reason because the city of Murfreesboro has, has time frames on all their projects. That's going to be completed in fall of 2010. If that's if we're not done, we'll be paying a thousand dollars per day liquidated mm -hmm. damages on our project mm -hmm. uh, due to the unseasonably wet, wet weather we've had. Uh, as everybody knows here lately, we've been working uh, any day we can, Monday through Saturday, uh, to get all we can done to finish on time. Mm -hmm. uh, I will make it a, we'll take in full responsibility to get all the signs posted as required, the truck center and highway, the blasting zone safety and all that. Um, we would request to work as normal hours we've been working uh, and keep, uh, and as to allude on the sheriff's office, uh, we've made a few calls ourselves to have them patrol in that area pretty heavy because of some uh, people we've had, you know, just prowling out there on our jobs that night for thief reasons. So we've asked the sheriff's department to be out there on uh, more than normal, you know, circumstances just to make sure because with the cost of stuff that we've got out there and our equipment and everything, um, you, you take, if you, if you ask us to start at 8 a.m., you're just cutting off that much time of our working day and pushing us farther in the world. We're going to be working there up farther into the try where we can get done now into the early spring you're just going to keep getting lighter and lighter okay we understand joe what hours do you have to start and what time do you stop right now sir we're in the hall and we're trying to start at 6 30 a.m and haul to about 4 p.m uh some are ours that we own and some are contracted out yes sir we'll take care of that Uh, it has been, of course, every day it's getting low.
7 a.m. That'd be fine. Right. That would be fine with us. Jerry. I'm done. Thank okay. you. Keith. Uh, uh, let me ask you a quick kind of follow up on what they said. If we, um, and I know you're on a, you know, I know you want to get the project done yes, sir. as quickly as you can. But if we, if we, don't, if we uh, made a requirement that you, uh, that the hauling was done from say eight, eight to four every day, Monday through Friday, how far would that uh, cut into your deadline? And 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 I and I know you want to get it done, but if we made these changes and put you uh, uh, better graces with the community out there, I, that's what we're trying to look at. Right. I would feel, and you're you if you say eight to four, Monday through Friday, you're knocking you know Saturday off. Well, the Saturdays when we typically run, uh, we haven't run every Saturday. We probably worked uh, four Saturdays since we've been out there. And uh, we usually work 6.30 to 1.30 or 2.30 on Saturdays. And then, uh, I mean, if you take Saturdays off and want us to start at 8, you know, somewhere at 7.30, 8 a.m., you're knocking an hour to hour and a half of work off every day. Uh, so you're losing, you know, a week, a day a week plus your Saturday. So you're not, you're going to extend it two days every week that you're working. So. Uh, I, I, I'm just trying to say right, how, the, how, how far is this going to, I would get I mean, you out of your deadline right now uh we're on pretty good track goal to meet our deadline uh that is, is continuing we have pretty good working weather through the winter and through the spring and so far and through until we get to next summer uh that that's something i you know who knows all right so well i just you know, i'm just you know, i feel like you all are trying to you know i want to do what's yeah, we try to, try to make good graces of the pe to people yes, out there, and I, I think the I, some of their uh, concerns is just have to be uh, somewhat time period, and, and then a safety issue too. So, right. but all right, thank we'll you, make sir. sure that we get the proper. I mean, we, like I said, we've got the truck center and highway and stuff. We'll get them posted where they'll stay up every day, and monitor to the speeds there, and then list, list, rest will be up to y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. Well, I think uh, one thing we need to be careful about. We're not going to do the neighbors out there any favor if we drag this thing out longer than what is necessary. Now, one thing, uh, my thinking on this is that they're concerned about safety. I would be too. And let's make sure the safety issue, we have the signs put up. We have the uh, sheriff's department to monitor the speed. And these folks have assured us of that. And let them get their gravel, get out of there and then let the neighborhood go back to, uh, to its normal uh, operation, normal living there. So if we drag this thing out longer, it's just gonna make it harder on the people who live out there. That, that's my thinking, but you know, I'll support whatever you all feel that you need. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. I'll entertain a motion on it. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve with the conditions that uh, staff has prepared for us. In addition to those that uh, uh, they give, submit a copy of the reclamation plan to them when that's established by the engineering department, uh, they would agree to provide her a copy of the state blasting permit. Uh, the signs for the uh, trucks entering the highway will be uh, erected. Um, no hauling before daylight, no hauling after dark. Did you get all of that? Okay. Make sure she gets it. We have a second to it. Second. Got a second. You want to read that back, make sure we have it. I made a recommendation for approval with the staff commit a recommendations, a uh, copy of the reclamation plan being submitted, copy of the blasting permit submitted the signs for the trucks entering the highway uh, being corrected and no hauling before daylight. Okay. Did I get everything? Or after dark. Or after dark, okay. Okay. We have a second to that. Call the roll, please. Keith, second. Keith Bratcher? Yes. Joe Crowell? Yes. Linda Dansby? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. Motion carries, sir. It is approved. 
The next item we have is a request by Joyce Fry, who is uh, requesting a Type B mobile home. Okay. Application 2009-61, filed by Joyce Fry, involves the property located at 9358 Horton Highway. It's a 5.5-acre site that's on Residential 15. She is seeking a conditional use permit to allow a Type B mobile home as an accessory dwelling unit in the R15 zone. Uh, the property itself already contains a 1,564-square-foot home, and uh, the applicant owns two ad ad additional adjacent properties that surround the subject property that um, is 51 acres, and the total acreage owned by the applicant is 57 acres. The proposed mobile home, um, she has not selected a model yet, but it could measure up to 24 by 70 or 1,680 square feet in area. Um, the applicant may also elect to place a, a double wide, which uh, double wides would not have to come before the board unless it exceeded the 25% size for accessory dwelling units. So we're covering these three requests in, in this application just in case she selects um, a double wide or if she opts to go with the type B mobile home, which is a single wide that kicks in the automatic um, review by the Board of Zoning Appeals. The site is located in an area that's rural in nature, and it contains both built homes and constructed homes. Um, it appears that the mobile home will be placed approximately 500 feet off of Horton Highway. Uh, staff has recommended conditions. We find that um, it meets the criteria for conditional use with those conditions, and I'm just going to go through some photos of the site, the area and um, show you the location of the proposed mobile home. And that is uh, our GIS system uh, has combined the three properties for tax purposes, but it is three separate parcels, and you'll see later in a graphic that we've prepared at least the parcel that we're talking about. So. Um, And the applicant supplied us with a, a survey or a portion of a survey showing the, par the parcel that we're discussing in its entirety. Um, if you see the, the red highlight, the, that's where the location of the mobile home will be. The single family residence is located closer to Horton Highway. Um, the other two properties, uh, one of the properties has a single wide mobile home located on it, and the other property has a single family residence on it. There are also um, other accessory structures on the 57 acres. And that concludes staff's presentation. Okay, do we have anyone here representing this request? If you'll come around, please. My name is Joyce Fry, and I think the only other thing that I have to add to that is that the reason for putting um, an additional mobile home on the property is that we're doing that for a family member that's in college, and she's a single mother, so that's the reason. Would, would this be a temporary placement, or do you, is this going to be permanent? Um, I'm not sure at this point. If she needs housing when she gets out of school, then she, you know, we'll let her stay there. But regardless, it would be for family members. Yes, okay. it's not for rental. Any questions? Uh, I just uh, have one. Now, you say you're going, you're putting that there for someone that's going to college. Yes. Like I say, after that, uh, what, what, what do you do with this property? I mean, this trailer, will you remove it or? Uh, probably at some point in time, but. Uh, we would allow her to stay there as long as she needs to stay there. I right. mean, uh, it's not uh, something that we would put there, and when she gets out of school, we're going to take it away from there, you know. Right. Uh, but I'm just saying, you're saying the purpose of it, you wanting, requesting this for, for the purpose of her being right. there. Right. If she, when she, when she no longer in college and moves away, what's going to happen with this property? Is it we probably become... will take it off the property. Okay. I don't know that it's we'd not, want to keep it's it. Not, it's not going to become rental property? No. Okay. No. Any other questions? Joe? I have a question. Ma'am, where do you 
No, no, I, I, mm -hmm. There's, I have a space picked out to have uh, tested to see if it will perk. What grade is she in in college? She, this is her junior year, and then she's going to go on and get her master's, so she's, she's probably got three years. She's my niece, and she's got a baby, so. <laughs> We don't plan on that, no, because our home is there, and we. Uh, that's fine. Um, I will have a question about the site plan, and it just the site plan on the center track shows a mobile home. Is that the incorrect placement on the site plan, and it's actually on the first lot? I'm mean, this one I have here, or are there going to be two accessory dwelling units on the property? On the uh, the track that is in yellow uh -huh. uh, is the track that we're speaking of. Now the track on the other side of that is also ours, and it has a mobile home on, closer to the line over there. Okay, and is that one occupied or rented or? No, she's in it right now. She's living in it right now. What are you going to do with it once she leaves? I don't plan to do anything with it. We used it for storage until she came up here to to go to school. Did you have a question? Um, I just wanted to indicate that mobile home, if it's more than on more than five acres, it's a permitted use. I, I was just asking why did she need another dwelling unit if she had one? Mm -hmm. um, and so that was my concern. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who would want to speak on this request. Uh, I would just hope that y'all would, would approve this because... Uh, Commissioner, would you state oh, your name? Ronald Williams, I'm sorry. Commissioner from District 8. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner. Forgot it didn't carry over. Uh, where this is located out here is actually... Uh, it's way on that corner of the county out there. And, and the, the existing uh, trailer that they're in, they're just trying to upgrade her to get her in something that, that's nicer for she can be there and help out the family member on that. So, uh, you know, I don't know that there's a problem with fries if you just you make it where it has to be the family member that lives in that or not, and not because they, they're not interested in turning this into the rental property. Uh, the neighbors around there are all okay with it. Nobody has, uh, I know them quite well. We trade goats and everything else with them, so uh, uh, they're all okay with, uh, with what's going on there. So no complaints on this one, which is good. So I hope you could approve it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Anyone else? Close the public hearing. We have a motion on it. I move that it be approved with staff comments. We have a motion to be approved. We have a second. Need a second. Died with lack of a second. We have another motion. Well, they're kind of wanting to upgrade, and uh, what they have out there, is, according to them, would be used for storage. I can understand that. It, Keith, what's your thinking? Oh well, I just uh, I think I was thinking kind of along the same lines uh, Linda was. I you know uh, just uh, and 
but the owner not really saying what she's going to do with the other property. I just, and I know we've uh, we've kind of wrestled with this on some other a lot of applications, and we were wanting to make sure that we, in the past, I know we want we want we were to get into uh, where we were approving uh, a bunch of different uh, dwellings on one parcel of land, and then becoming you know uh, rental property. So uh, that's why I'd asked that question, and I you know by. I guess my concerns were kind of somewhat his, and it just wasn't anything clear from the homeowner what their intentions were with the other property. So, or, or even after this property, after she, the family member ceases to live there. Would, would it be better if you put a, they, they said they wouldn't uh, use it as rental property, and they don't mind you putting that uh, requirement on there. Would that be better? I could, I could, uh, I could accept that. Jerry? Uh, I wonder if we could ask her, would she be willing to remove the other trailer once this one's built? Pardon me? Would she be willing to remove the other trailer? I'm sorry, I still didn't hear that. Well, it's a permitted use, but if would she be willing to remove the other trailer? Joe? Would she be willing to move the other trailer if they put that one Joe? Could I make this motion? Sure. Go I ahead. make the motion. Try could I, could I? Could I make this motion that neither trailer ever be a rental trailer? You can add that as a requirement. I'll add that as a requirement. I make the motion. Okay. And you move that it be approved with, with that stipulation. Do I have, need a second to it now? I'll second that motion. Okay. We've got a second. Call the roll, please. One moment. Keith Bradger? Yes. Joe Crowell? Yes. Linda Dansby? Yes. Jerry Sartain? No. Zane Cantrell? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, it is approved. The next item we have is a request by Daniel Peebles, who is requesting a variance uh, to allow 240 square foot accessory structure. Application 2009-62, filed by Daniel Peebles, um, involves the property located at 4699 Winrow Road. It's a 2.34-acre site that's zoned Residential 15. There's a single-family residence on the property. Um, he is seeking variance relief to allow an additional 240 square feet of detached accessory structure area for a total of 20 40 square feet in the R15 zone. He's permitted 1,800 based on the size of his parcel. And he'd like to construct a 34 by 60 detached garage that could provide um, him the ability to store his uh, trailer and trucks and boats in this. Uh, there are no other accessory structures on the property, though it does not meet the uh, criteria for variance, it will continue, if approved, to meet the 20% lot coverage requirement established in our zoning resolutions. And if the board opts to approve the application, the applicant, we should make sure that the applicant is made aware through a condition on the conditional use permit that no other detached, detached structures will be permitted since he has exceeded the maximum allowable space. Um, I'm showing you some photos of the site. This is the aerial of the home that was recently constructed. There are no other accessory structures on the property. And these are photos of the area surrounding property. The single family residence. Um, an elevation that the applicant provided of uh, the proposed garage that it uh, won't, from to the highest point of the roof, it will be 22 feet in height. And that fell, falls within our regulations of 35 feet. And staff posted a sign at the property, and this concludes our presentation. Did, did I understand you right? Is this detachable? It is detached. Okay. Do we have anyone here representing this request? Could come around, please? Yeah. 
everyone. <clears throat> My name is Daniel Peebles, and I've applied for the variance. Um, basically, I'm just looking to get an additional 240 square feet because it'll allow me to meet the needs for storage that I have much better than the 1,800 square feet. I have, uh, you know, per the map that shows my land, I'm bordered on uh, property by three individuals. Uh, I have gone to all of those individuals and acquired their written permission. So uh, the large acre lot around me was Linda Gilly. Uh, she owns the property to the side and behind me, and I've acquired her written permission uh, for the variance. Jeff Wallace is to the left of me, and uh, Mr. Bill Miller is across the street, and I told him about the variance, and uh, he gave me his written permission as my neighbor, saying that that would be fine. If you'll turn that in, too. Yeah, that for the record. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Peebles, this is the only uh, sensory structure that would be on the property? That, that would, if you constructed this, this would be the only accessory only structure that you that you have on the beside your home. Oh yes. Okay. Okay. Thank yes. You. Thank this you. is where we plan on living the rest of our lives. <laughs> the acoustics are terrible in here. <laughs> Sometimes, I don't know if you all are hearing me, but I, I get about every third or fourth word I'm missing somewhere. So. We need to really speak up very loud. I know you're having a hard time copying some of this. Um, any other questions? Thank you. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this. Commissioner, are you the only one that ever has anything? <laughs> I'm just happy they all showed up tonight for this as opposed to spreading them out over three or four months. Uh, <clears throat> in the zone, Ron, Ronald Williams, I'm District 8 Commissioner Steele. Uh, Mr. Peebles has a really nice size lot out there, a little over two acres. And in this new zoning regulations that we've been working to on the past, that we've hired this firm to and we're going through this, one of the big concerns that a lot of us commissioners have had is we've got a lot of these nice lots that are limited by the regulations. So we're working towards trying to get this changed to where a 20% of the lot size would apply so it would match size-wise with, with the people's lot. You got an acre lot or, or three acre lot, because right now it currently says from a one to five acre lot, they all gotta have the, the same size. And different people have different means, but. Uh, aside from that, I mean, I just give you that footnote because I, th I think it's important when somebody has a nice size lot that they, that they be uh, conformed to everything. And I think Mr. Peebles is just asking for, he still meets within the 20% criteria of the overall lot size. And, you know, that's uh, hard to, I don't know that you can get that much more in 200 and what, space uh, square feet that he's looking for but I would just hope that you would approve it because he does have a nice lot uh, no, nobody's complained about this and, and it would kind of help him uh, be a good neighbor out there for a while so thank you thank you Commissioner Williams we have a mo will anyone else close the public hearing we have a motion on this since his request meets uh, falls within the maximum lot coverage I move for approval Second. Motion and second. Call the roll, please. Keith Bratcher? Yes. Joe Crowell? Yes. Linda Danphy? Yes. Jerry Thartain? Yes. Thane Cantrell? Yes. Motion carries. It is approved. That's all we have on business tonight, so we are adjourned. <laughs>